Hey, thanks for joining, guys. Um, there's a panel poll question up on the screen, if you wouldn't mind filling that out while we're waiting for others to join. Be great, we'll start in a few minutes. Hi everyone, as you're joining in, there should be a poll question that popped up on your screen. Um, if you wouldn't mind taking a second to fill that out and submit it, we'll see some of our results in a moment here when we get started. Thanks. Hey, Young, can you please post the results of our poll? So we had a poll question for those of you that joined just before um, this meeting started. Uh, what cool colors should the city use for their roads next? Options were purple pizzazz, blue steel, expedition khaki, and cool as a cucumber. Most people, 67% said cool as a cucumber. So that'll be fun to see some cool colored streets. Um, thank you for that. Um, I'm going to share my screen right quick here. And welcome everybody to our um, Cool Pavements Pilot Program uh, webinar, uh, Lunch with Branch with ASCE Phoenix Branch. Couple of Announcements. I uh, wanted to thank Young Kaprowski and Y2K Engineering for hosting today's virtual event. Um, I am Stephanie Templeton. I'm the president. We have also some of our other board members on here. Sky Gentili is our president elect. Joe Dietrich is our vice president. Brad Denias is our secretary. 
Kent Law is our current treasurer, and Larry Hansen is our past president. Um, we have a few other representatives in chair and advisor positions. Um, Cynthia Alvarez is our YMF younger member president. Anna Tora is our membership chair. Andrew Chill, who you'll be hearing from a little bit, is our outreach chair. Mike Neighbor is our sustainability chair. Um, and we have three practitioner advisors to ASU and their student chapter, and that's Anna Tora, Ryan Cercello, and Wesley Scatina. Stephanie, please uh, share your screen. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Apologize for that, guys. Can you guys see it now? Yes. Okay. So sorry about that, everyone. Um, some upcoming announcements and events on May 12th. We have a City of Phoenix CIP Lunch of the Branch that will be virtual. Um, there will be PDHs provided to the attendees for that. Um, so, so look in the email blast that will come out in a couple of weeks for registration for that. We have also started at the Phoenix Branch a Sustainability Committee. Um, in the last email blast, there is a section that has our missions and goals and contact information on there on how to get involved with that committee. Um, it's, it's really great. There, there's two people on it right now and we'd love to get a handful more. Um, we are also hosting a member drive through ASCE. This is a national drive. Um, there's a handful of cash and gift card prizes that are available to membership that refers other members and also for the branch that brings in the most new members. So if you want to make any referrals, please visit this website at the bottom here and I'll give you more information on that. Uh, we also have new sponsorship levels for our ASCE Phoenix branch ranging from meeting sponsor, YMS sponsor, student sponsors, and corporate level sponsors. Um, there's more information on what is um, available for each level in our email newsletter that went out a couple days ago. Um, or feel free to contact any of the members of our branch officers and we will get you more information as well. So after today's presentation, you will be receiving a PDH. So look forward to getting that in your email. And then with that, there, there are a couple of just housekeeping announcements I want to uh, make you guys aware of. There's a question and answer function at the end of, or on the bottom of your screen where you can type in questions. Um, at the end of the presentation, I will read those back and allow Ryan to have a second to um, answer those. So please use that function. And we are recording this uh, webinar. So that will be available on our website and the section website as well after the fact if you need to refer back to anything. And with that, I'd like to introduce our cool pavement pilot program and our presenter, Ryan Stevens. I'll turn it over to Andrew to introduce him real quick. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie, and, and good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining. And so it's my privilege to introduce Ryan Stevens with the City of Phoenix. And I, uh, I worked with Ryan several years ago at an internship, and he was finishing up his master's, and I was finishing up my bachelor's. And so it was cool to see him, uh, I believe it was last summer, on the, on the news, uh, uh, talking about all, all the work he's been doing for Phoenix. And and especially with this uh, pilot project that look forward to hear more about. So a little bit about Ryan. Uh, Ryan is a civil engineer three for the pavement management team in the city of, of Phoenix Streets Transportation Department. The, the pavement management team develops the five-year pavement maintenance program to keep Phoenix's 5,000 street miles in good condition. The team is involved with collecting and analyzing pavement condition data optimizing pavement maintenance treatments and timing, timing, managing construction of pavement maintenance activities and forecasting future conditions. 
His current projects include the city's 200 million accelerated pavement maintenance program and the cool pavement pilot program. Brian is a registered professional engineer in Arizona and holds a bachelor's degree and master's degree in civil engineering from Arizona State University. While at ASU, he was a research assistant in the School of Sustainable Engineering and the Built Environment. So we're pleased to have Ryan uh, with us this afternoon and I'll turn the floor over to him. Thank you, Andrew, for that introduction and thank you, uh, Stephanie and Young for uh, inviting me. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here this afternoon. I will go ahead and start sharing when I can figure out where my button went. <laughs> there it is. All right. Uh, again, thank you uh, for having me. Uh, I'm very excited to be here to talk about uh, a fairly new uh, project in the city of Phoenix. Uh, it's our uh, cool pavement pilot program. Uh, something that uh, really uh, took off, uh, started planning it at the end of 2019. And uh, as I'll talk about, we delivered last year in 2020. So uh, something that is uh, a quick pilot uh, and we're very excited to uh, explore the benefits of this type of treatment. First, just a little bit about the city of Phoenix by the numbers uh, we have uh, nearly 5,000 miles of streets in the city uh, across 520 square miles. So we know Phoenix is a large city, uh, fifth largest in the nation in terms of its population. And we have a street network uh, to match that population size. Uh, our street network is split up uh, in different classifications, of course, as uh, engin uh, civil engineers and other engineers might uh, gather. Uh, so, but almost two thirds of that network is our local street network and the remainder is our arterial and collector streets. Uh, our department though maintains way more than just street or pavement. Uh, we have uh, 1200 traffic signals for 1200 intersections, I believe. Uh, over 93,000 street lights, uh, 400, uh, 542 miles of bike lanes and growing thanks to uh, our active transportation team and implementation in many projects, including maintenance projects and uh, over 580 bridges, including a bridge that we are reconstructing at the moment, which is a very interesting project. And of course, we have uh, men and women in our uh, field offices or our field crews that are filling potholes each year, thousands of potholes, sweeping our roads and refreshing our striping. Uh, so particularly now that it's hot, but at all times of the year, uh, they do a great job out there. Uh, and uh, you know, now that it's hot, definitely uh, thinking about them and want to make sure they're safe out there. But today uh, I am going to focus on the cool pavement pr pilot program. So uh, I'll basically be discussing what is cool pavement or what is our pilot program and why is the city looking to apply a cool pavement product. Um, on the screen you will see our uh, email pavement at phoenix.gov. I will also have my contact information at the end of the slideshow, uh, should you have any uh, follow-up questions over email or over the phone. Um, but, uh, and I'll also point to our project website that has a lot of great information as well. So first off is what is cool pavement? Well, it is an asphalt seal coat. So asphalt emulsified in water uh, with polymers and other emulsifiers. It is a safe, non-toxic product that's suitable for activities on a road. So uh, just like other, uh, I'll say traditional or dark colored uh, asphalt seal coats, it has the same uh, safety qualities in that regard. Uh, it's applied using a spray, as you saw in that video and you'll see later or with a squeegee and we've used both in this pilot program. Uh, and since it's an asphalt product, uh, we're very excited that it's compatible with our existing asphalt surfaces, not only for uh, a great bond, uh, but for wearing and also for uh, potential uh, recycling in the future. And uh, we also like, you know, that it's uh, compared to paint, we believe it's going to be 
uh, more durable uh, like our other asphalt seal coats as opposed to paint that needs to be refreshed quite often. There's the video again, sorry. <laughs> so why? I mean, it seems, it's a, seems like a kind of silly question because we're in a very hot city, but uh, just to go through it, the, the purpose of the pilot is to see how this type of product uh, might help mitigate uh, urban heat. Uh, pavements can cover between 30 and 40% of the urbanized area. Um, so when we think of a city, you know, our street network is a lot of our area. Uh, then we have our buildings and roofs and things of that nature. So, uh, but pavement and paved surfaces, parking lots, sidewalks, streets, uh, really cover a lot of that area. And, and as I'll discuss just a little bit, um, you know, streets, particularly asphalt streets or really any product in the built environment are the last to cool down at night compared to natural landscaping, plants, and things of that nature. So uh, the images we have here uh, got a, a thermal image of this street and this, it's a concrete uh, kind of parking lot here. And you can just see the relative differences between uh, the surface temperature of these two different paved products. Um, and the vast majority of streets in the city of Phoenix are asphalt. So what can we do to make uh, streets um, less emissive, less hot, uh, particularly at night to combat uh, the urban heat island effect. Uh, and then <clears throat> the picture, <clears throat> the picture on the right, excuse, excuse me, uh, shows just the difference. So this is, you know, our, our pilot, uh, our pilot of our pilot project, the very first installation uh, that I will discuss. Um, the product is a uh, lighter in color and it's uh, essentially using an al a change in albedo uh, to reflect uh, solar energy away from the pavement structure. Uh, this is an example done uh, from uh, uh, part of the study at ASU uh, and talking about the urban heat island. So the main graphic here is showing you know, our evening temperature or the 5 p.m. temperature versus the 5 a.m. temperature and uh, across the different types of landscaping. And we can see in the urban setting in the center um, that uh, our 5 a.m. temperature is much, much hotter than uh, those natural uh, landscapes. Uh, and of course, then at night or at 5 p.m. when everything's heated up during the day, you know, everything is hotter. Uh, but it's that cooling off in the evening or at night that brings those other uh, landscapes back down to uh, a much more bearable temperature. So that's the concept of the urban heat island, that cities stay hotter through the night. They cool down a little bit, but not nearly as much as uh, the natural landscape, even here in the desert. Uh, and the images on the left are an example of our very own Sky Harbor Airport. Uh, talk about a place that has a lot of paved surfaces uh, between runways, taxiways, uh, and, and uh, the roads in the airport. Uh, the top image is of 11.20 uh, a.m., uh, so morning, but getting into the afternoon, and then 10.40 p.m., so once the sun has gone down, even, even in June, the sun's already down by that point, and you can just see how radiant the airport still is as the area around it uh, starts to cool off. And that's uh, kind of a classic example of the urban heat island effect. And there's uh, costs essentially with that, uh, health costs, energy costs to cool our buildings and cool our infrastructure. Um, so that's, uh, and, and of course health and comfort for livability. So, uh, we really are starting to take this seriously and seeing how our roads might be a tool uh, as part of a tool set to uh, address this. Uh, just a few other images, again, uh, uh, that uh, pavements can cover about 30 to 40% of an urban area and that streets are the last to cool down at night. Uh, we can see in these images uh, that pink and orange are the cooler image, or cooler surfaces and the yellow uh, are uh, the hotter surfaces. And we can see this across our different settings. And what I find interesting is in our you know, commercial and industrial settings, we've figured this out a little bit uh, because 
I don't know that I've seen many industrial roofs that aren't painted white. And we can see that cooling effect, at least on the roof surface, uh, and definitely compared to the street surfaces around them and the parking lots around them. So uh, we know a little bit about it on roofs and now we're looking at it uh, for our streets to see if there's gonna be a benefit. Uh, again, I touched on it a little bit. Uh, one obvious benefit that we are seeing is to reduce daytime surface temperature. Uh, one of the things we'll be looking at and studying is how is the surface temperature different from the air temperature? Uh, because it's great to cool down the surface, uh, but if uh, where people are standing or walking, it is uh, the same or hotter, uh, is that still a benefit? And that is a distinction we're gonna be relying on our research partners to help us examine. Um, uh, again, the main purpose really of our pilot is to help reduce the urban heat island effect. So make streets cooler in the afternoons or, or in the evenings and at night so that people can still use those facilities uh, into the evening hours without them being so hot. And by getting them cooled down throughout the night uh, so that they start off cooler in the morning, uh, more like our natural landscape. And really, this is all to try to see how we can improve livability within the city. Uh, we have news articles already this year about uh, heat issues. Uh, we, of course, hear of, uh, unfortunately, children being left in vehicles or pets. Um, so heat is definitely a, something that Phoenix is taking seriously to start addressing. And as a civil engineer and part of the pavement maintenance team, uh, the added benefit of uh, adding a seal to our streets is good to extend pavement life, but also potentially keeping our streets cooler in terms of their structure, uh, we believe might help extend the pavement life. Uh, again, since uh, these are asphalt streets, asphalt is aged and it becomes brittle uh, from oxidation, but also from heat. As we think of uh, heating up asphalt to place it, you gotta uh, be careful that you don't overcook it, essentially, uh, to cause heat aging. So. Uh, these images are from uh, mi the middle of one of our installations. You can see uh, the uh, one side of the street coated with the uh, cool pavement coating and the other not. And you can also see again uh, the houses, uh, houses, the roofs, uh, the trees, the vegetation, and some of the desert landscaping there. And although the desert landscape does seem to have some red hot zones, uh, presumably that's going to cool down at night faster than the street. And again, you see these houses don't have white roofs. Uh, you can see how hot they're getting. Uh, and also, you know, a final thing to point out is the combination of trees or shade uh, with the cool seal uh, definitely looks to have a compounding effect that the shade on, that cool, uh, on the cool pavement uh, is just as cool as the vegetation itself, which is very interesting. Uh, again, we think of this as one of many tools uh, but it's a tool that still provides a great number of benefits. So uh, again, there are many tools that we can pursue and should pursue like green roofs or cool roofs, of course, trees and shade and other vegetation and then cool pavement, you know. So uh, all of these parts of our infrastructure, uh, you know, could benefit from examining how they will be uh, heat resilient. Um, but it is that cool pavement that is shown as having uh, a nighttime uh, here it's visibility, but I would even argue that it's just that nighttime cooling effect, perhaps more than other treatments. So a little bit about the actual pilot program. So we selected uh, neighborhood streets. Uh, since this is an asphalt seal coat, that's a product we use on our local and minor collector streets. So neighborhood streets are a perfect candidate. And again, as a seal coating product, uh, we want the streets to be in good condition. So we're applying our pavement management practices to use the right treatment on the right streets. So uh, we looked at essentially neighborhoods that were overlaid or a, a mill and overlay or a slurry seal uh, within the last two years uh, that would not need uh, major maintenance. So as part of our maintenance program, we try to make sure we're in after other utilities, uh, communications as much as we can so that uh, once we've done those overlays, particularly, uh, they won't be cut. And so we also wanted to select some of these locations uh, with the presumption that there will be less chance for them to be cut while we're uh, by a utility uh, while we're examining the product. So 
we first identified with our pavement management system uh, roads that were in a good condition and that were uh, treated in the last, uh, it was two years uh, with either of those treatments. And we uh, reached out to each council office. We thought it was important to spread the projects throughout the city. So one in each of our council districts and also uh, uh, a location selected by the mayor who has an environmental background and is very excited and supported, uh, supportive of this project. Uh, actually the Hill uh, website published an op-ed citing the mayor and one of the things she mentioned was uh, our cool pavement pilot program and the amount of solar uh, infrastructure that we're putting in our city facilities. So uh, really a focus for the mayor as well. And by dispersing it throughout the city, we think this gives us a great uh, study area, essentially, because every part of the city uh, is different. We see that when monsoons come in and someone can get dumped on uh, while another part of the city or the valley is totally dry. So uh, there'll be different conditions and different types of neighborhoods throughout the city. And we wanted to make sure that we covered the whole city. We also, uh, after uh, our first project was at Esteban Park at 32nd Street and Rozier. And that was in uh, beginning of June, 2020. Uh, and I call that the pilot of our pilot because that's a city park. If it went horribly wrong, it's on city property, we could fix it. But luckily uh, it went very well. Uh, and then we had some of that collateral for that project to use to educate the public. Uh, so. Uh, we were putting, we put out these uh, neighborhood signs, a little bit more notification than we typically do for a resurfacing project. Um, you can see there, it has a picture of essentially the cool pavement uh, next to a traditional asphalt seal coat. Uh, I also like to say, and I'm proud that our uh, first virtual public meeting uh, as, uh, as a consequence of the pandemic was our public meeting for in, in our department, not the whole city, but in our department uh, was for the Cool Pavement Pilot Program. So uh, certainly a very uh, interesting process. And now we've done dozens of virtual public meetings in our department, uh, but Cool Pavement was the first. That's pretty, I think that's pretty neat, so. Uh, I guess to, to wrap that up, we then also, we also consulted with the council district offices uh, so given them that engineering criteria of where we believed would be appropriate, uh, we then went to our council offices and engaged with them to get their support and uh, pick the locations. So, so uh, why is this a pilot? So that's uh, because it's the first time we're using the product, quite honestly. Uh, although we've done asphalt seal coats, uh, we've not done something uh, with a you know, heat uh, goal in terms of a street project. So we're piloting it. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're testing and measuring its effectiveness and durability over time. Uh, we're using uh, a lot of our examples and uh, previous experience of this product is from the city of Los Angeles, um, but LA and Phoenix are different. So we really want to make sure by piloting this type of treatment, we're making sure that it's right for Phoenix. Because uh, even if a product is right and, and it's a good product, uh, in some ways, Phoenix is special, and in some ways, you know, we are like any other city, but we do want to make sure that the product is right for Phoenix. So we want to make sure, is it actually going to be effective at reducing temperatures, and how is it going to hold up over time? If it's touted to last uh, X number of years, are we going to see that? Uh, we're not going to wait X number of years before we decide to proceed, uh, but it is something that, you know, will be in the back of our minds to make sure that it holds up to uh, our street sweeping, for example, and our traffic, even if it's only on local roads. So we're working with uh, our partners. Uh, of course, the uh, Office of Sustainability uh, in the city is uh, very active and interested in this project. We also worked with the manufacturer. So uh, the particular product is called Cool Seal. And I'm only uh, saying that, that it is the product is uh, is that I'm not uh, advocating or, or pitching for them, but uh, this is the product we're using in our pilot. And that's because uh, it's really the preferred alternative that the city of Los Angeles has been uh, examining a few different products. Uh, we'll let them be the bleeding edge so that we can be on the leading edge, uh, so to speak. So, uh, but we've been working with the manufacturer to innovate uh, some of the application and dial in you know, how it's applied in Phoenix. 
And our contractor for the uh, project is Biosyn Corporation for the pilot program. Again, uh, this partnership of the city, the contractor and the supplier is really making, I think, some great strides to innovate the product and the application. And that's something that's gonna be beneficial for the whole region should more cities decide to uh, do such, uh, you know, do their own pilots or actually, you know, bring this on as a treatment. It's something that I believe the contracting community will also benefit from. We'll be able to teach them essentially how to apply this product in Phoenix. In, in the Valley. And then of course, uh, our research partners at Arizona State University, uh, I'll talk about them a little bit more in, more in depth, um, but they're really looking at uh, those heat uh, benefits or those potential heat benefits. Uh, one of the things they're doing is this fun little cart, it's called a Marty, M-A-R-T-Y. And it is taking those near surface temperatures. So of course, uh, we can measure the surface temperature uh, with infrared thermometers and see uh, what's going on at the surface. Uh, but this cart is taking near surface temperatures and they uh, put it on a path or they would take it uh, in a path through these neighborhoods and uh, also onto sidewalks and other surfaces. So we're seeing a difference between the cool pavement product uh, and the sidewalk and the grass and gravel and things of that nature. And that particular phase of their research is at four times during a single day. So uh, essentially pre-dawn, uh, solar noon, evening and, and night. So again, sort of kind of the same times uh, that you might look to see a benefit for Urban Heat Island specifically. Uh, and they're also doing a lot of other measurements for us that I'll talk about. So our first, uh, again, our first uh, project was at Esteban Park uh, in June of 2020, early June 2020. Uh, here we are using essentially the squeegee method. So you've got a few different trucks here, um, uh, but essentially they're squeegeeing the product onto the surface. Uh, it's a two coat process. And so uh, when you see these buggies going over the product, uh, they're applying the second coat. Again, as an asphalt emulsion, it's water-based. So uh, you see it's very wet and then the water uh, evaporates, which actually makes it great for a summer application when it's uh, very hot. Uh, and I do have uh, a quick video of uh, one of these squeegees in action. Again, there's no sound, uh, but the, the sound you would hear is just a motor. So um, hopefully this should be going. So, so that's the gist of essentially how it's applied with a squeegee. Again, you can see uh, it's a liquid product, uh, but it's certainly more viscous than water. So it's not really flowing. Um, so we're mo they're moving it around uh, with these buggies and then they would use hand squeegees in, in certain areas. Um, oops. And uh, so this was from that first installation. Uh, again, it was actually on June 12th. Uh, and you can see the product uh, there on the right at 82 degrees and uh, the traditional asphalt seal coat uh, on the left at 112 degrees. Uh, and I don't remember what the air temperature was that day in June, uh, but you can see how dramatic of a difference that is um, in, the in the surface temperature at similar times uh, of day. So um, again, a 30 degree difference. Um, Later in June, on June 29th, uh, very, I'll say unscientifically, we went out to take a look and saw more like an 18 degree uh, difference. And again, I don't know exactly what the air temperature was, uh, but uh, the engineer did note that it was a cooler day. So we, must have, we looked at the temperature and saw that it was cooler. Um, you can also see a little bit in this picture how the product looks. Uh, again, when it's applied, that's as bright as it's going to be or as light colored as it's going to be. It does uh, fade or it does uh, between getting a little bit dirty and uh, fading over time, the color will change. 
Uh, it is stain resistant. So that's, of course, one of the things we're looking at is the aesthetics and how does it hold up to if we ever do get some rain. We got a little bit of rain in December, um, but we're kind of waiting to see, you know, what a big monsoon or something like that might do. Uh, and after the street sweepers go through. In Esteban Park, they do not sweep uh, the roads, but uh, but this is something you can go, uh, I know it's hot out, but you can of course go look at this uh, and, and see uh, you know, what you think of the product. Uh, but it, it all evens out uh, and it looks pretty much like cured concrete when it's done. And again, in these pictures, you can see how much it looks like the, the curb, that existing uh, concrete curbing. Uh, again, uh, I'm letting ASU do the bulk of the heavy, heavy research, uh, but this is uh, the solar reflective index. So it's one way to measure how much solar energy is reflecting off of a surface. So these are the measured uh, solar reflective readings uh, at installation. So uh, at each installation, we are measuring this value. So you could call it the peak value since it's the theoretically the brightest, uh, most reflective it will be. And comparing that to, I'll say, conventional or untreated streets. So uh, we're in neighborhoods, so we'll go over uh, to the neighborhood next door or a, a boundary street that is not coded. And that's where these uh, the conventional readings were taken. So we can see that traditional or conventional asphalt is very low, generally uh, below a 0.1. Uh, except in one of these cases. And this does not represent all of our nine installations. So there's just five of them. Uh, but the solar reflectance of the cool seal product is consistently above a 0.3 and in many times above a 0.35. Uh, so it's a marked increase. Uh, and uh, I believe the, uh, it's a 0.3 or a 0.33 that uh, qualifies for uh, lead credits you know, for uh, heat. So it's actually a very exciting prospect that this might be you know, a lead eligible product that is essentially you know, being done by a pavement, the pavement maintenance group. So very exciting uh, to see that. But we can see uh, part of what ASU will also be studying is how this uh, goes down over time. Um, and you know, that will help us weigh the, you know, that cost benefit of applying the product. And then of course, surface temperature. Surface temperature is something we can you know, easily measure you know, with our own staff, uh, but that's why we're letting ASU do the, the heavy lifting on that near surface temperature. Uh, I'm learning a lot from them as we have our discussions about uh, air mixing. Um, in, our, in Esteban Park, there's those large fields that presumably the air mass above grass is cooler and how that's mixing with the air around. Um, but I think the more that this product is out there, the more cooling products that are used in the city and more tools that are used, uh, you know, that air mixing potentially, you know, compounds benefit uh, of this type of treatment. Uh, and again, these are taken at different times of the year during installation. So as, as installation progressed in uh, August through November, uh, just went out and took some measurements. Uh, but again, on average, or the average of these five is about a 13 degree a decrease in the surface temperature. I want to be clear that that surface temperature, and we're letting ASU uh, research that near surface temperature or the temperature someone might actually feel. And that's kind of uh, where we're at in the pilot right now is awaiting that ASU research. Again, there's actually quite a large team, a small army of uh, researchers and students at ASU uh, looking at our at this uh, pilot program. So um, multiple partners, uh, again, looking at all those aspects from urban heat island uh, to, uh, you know, one of my uh, mentors at ASU, Dr. Kalush and his team are putting sensors into the pavement. I haven't really touched on that, but they're putting sensors in the pavement to see is are we cooling the pavement structure itself compared to not cooling it. So I like to think of it as uh, sunscreen protecting our, our the protecting our skin. Uh, this uh, you know cooling uh, product may be protecting our asphalt pavements and keeping them in good condition. So, uh, but essentially what they're doing is they're looking at long-term measurements in the asphalt. Uh, they're also monthly going and getting uh, the solar reflectivity ratings. Uh, we're also polling the neighbors, <laughs> so we're uh, talking to they are talking to people. We put together a survey uh, to get their impression on the product, um, does it feel 
uh, cooler? Does it feel hotter? Um, what differences are they seeing? How do they, what do they think of it? So certainly hearing from the community uh, on what they, on their perception is very important to us as well. I mentioned those Marty uh, trailers. They're also using uh, other measurements on uh, kind of regular cars, uh, taking uh, measurements throughout the day uh, for particular intervals. And we're expecting uh, those results in summer uh, coming up. So again, June 2020 was our very first installation. And then we were going into each of those neighborhoods starting in August. So we're uh, pretty close getting to the one year mark. Uh, so we expect to have uh, preliminary, the preliminary report and uh, talk to them about it. And uh, it's at that time that we'll start making decisions. Uh, management will start making decisions on uh, if and how we can proceed. So I will definitely make sure, uh, the, as I mentioned, the project uh, does have its own website. So that's definitely where we'll be posting uh, ASU's research. Uh, we'll be tweeting about it. So if you're not following at Streets uh, PHX, please do. Uh, you'll hear all about it when we have something to announce. Uh, again, just some videos of uh, the application going down. Uh, it's at this point I'll talk about uh, this pilot program is one of the largest in the nation. Uh, the city of Los Angeles has been uh, working on uh, their approach uh, for the last three or four years uh, doing you know, several city blocks. Um, our pilot program is 36 miles. <laughs> so uh, we, we really went big uh, to uh, see how this product will work. Um, so uh, I don't have the miles in front of me, unfortunately, but I do know that we have uh, outpaced everything that the city of Los Angeles has done in terms of putting product down on the ground. And part of it is that they prefer to squeegee. And we really innovated and pushed to get um, a spray application working so that we can put down uh, product uh, efficiently and quickly and start getting you know, progress. Because if we had to squeegee all of these neighborhoods, uh, we'd probably still be out there doing it. So uh, very, very cool. Uh, on this street also, I, I can tell you the striping went back as it is. That's the question we get, can you see striping? Uh, since this looks like concrete in the end, if we think of uh, ADOT freeways, overpasses, underpasses, uh, we see the typical yellow and white uh, and white striping uh, just fine. Um, but that's something we'll also be monitoring uh, to see how it, uh, how it looks over time. Uh, again, just a few more images of our in-progress work. Again, uh, each of these neighborhoods is a quarter section, uh, about a half mile by half mile, some uh, even a, a little bigger than that. And so can really have a transformative feel and look uh, for the neighborhood. And I'm coming up on the end of what I had to talk about and then I'm happy to get to your questions. I uh, hope there's some good ones out there that I will try to answer, but I wanted to acknowledge um, Ruben Lally, uh, Special Projects Administrator, uh, my uh, supervisor and my uh, friend <laughs> uh, overseeing the, the whole project. Uh, Mark Locke, uh, oops, I, he's also a PE, I apologize for that. Uh, Deputy Director in the Street Transportation Department uh, who uh, at the time we kicked off this project. Uh, and Kenny Knudsen, of course, our director in the street transportation department, uh, very supportive uh, and uh, very interested in the work that we're doing, not only in our accelerated program for pavement maintenance, uh, but all of these and other innovative things we are trying to do, uh, like recycling asphalt and, of course, the cool pavement program. Uh, and Mark Hartman, our, the city of Phoenix chief, chief sustainability officer. Uh, Dr. Arian Medell and the whole uh, ASU research team. So they are diligently working uh, again to get that uh, report out to us for the summer. And then, uh, you know, I can't do what I do without uh, my team. And it's a, it's a pretty large team, uh, but I've got all their names there. Several uh, fellow Sun Devils like me, uh, and uh, everyone just does a great job every day uh, to get this work done. Uh, and it would not be a report from, uh, or it would not be a presentation from our department if I didn't plug uh, to please let us know when you see any problems out there, whether it's related to cool pavement or if it's just a pothole, uh, please tell us. Uh, your eyes and ears out there are uh, our, most our most valuable tools. 
Uh, so I wanted to just plug how you can, uh, of course, let Phoenix uh, let us know if there's any issues, whether you reside in Phoenix or work in Phoenix or just transit through. Uh, uh, I would say uh, we've got it broken out for some of these specific areas, but of course, if you call just our regular, if, uh, the dispatch line 2626441, they will also just route uh, your particular uh, concern. So with that, I believe uh, that concludes the presentation and I'm ready to, uh, I'll try to answer your questions as best as I can. Thank you. Awesome. Well, that was a wonderful presentation, Ryan. Thanks so much for uh, presenting and teaching us about this cool uh, pavement program that you guys have going. Uh, we do have a bunch of questions. Anybody else that wants to write one, please use the Q&A function and I will start reading some of these so you can answer. Um, what distance from the ground in inches, feet range was the air temperature taken? Um, was it similar to temps taken by Maricopa County? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. And unfortunately, I don't know the answer. Uh, but, you know, we're looking at that, you know, the human experience level, I'll say, uh, but I believe there's an intermediate level. Uh, so, um, but I think, you know, in that, you know, one meter or three feet to six feet or eight feet range. So, um, unfortunately, I don't know the exact answer, uh, but we're looking for that near surface temperature specifically for, uh, you know, uh, people's comfort level. Uh, so I'm sorry, I don't know the specific answer. Uh, but that's what the ASU research team will th thoroughly document um, what their, uh, where their temperatures are taken and what that means. Okay, great. Um, do the streets that are part of the pilot program all have similar traffic counts on them? Uh, great question. So we didn't do a uh, traffic count uh, analysis per se. Uh, again, as uh, their local streets, so I believe uh, they generate the same amount of traffic, uh, but they're all about the same size. Again, one or two are slightly different. So if we think of the number of homes, um, they're about the same uh, size and they're all uh, local streets. Uh, but I do know, you know, there are some areas of the city, uh, for example, closer to downtown, there are two of the projects or two of the locations, one very near to downtown, um, like 12th Street and Van Buren and the other one at, uh, 43rd Avenue and Van Buren uh, that have a lot of on-street parking. Uh, and that's, you know, just a variable of, uh, you know, how many people live in each of those residences, if they're uh, working or if they're renting or if they're owning. And that's one of those things we want to take into consideration for full implementation. Uh, it may come down to a, I'll say a targeted treatment um, because there are several areas in our city that don't have, uh, you know, this picture is pretty nice. Uh, they've got some trees. I don't know that I would call them shade trees necessarily, uh, but they don't have a sidewalk. Uh, so uh, where there's a lack of infrastructure, uh, they certainly don't have a shaded sidewalk. So if someone's going to decide to, well, I see a sidewalk maybe on one side, but not down uh, the street there off to the right, uh, it, or at least not a very large sidewalk. So if someone wants to walk down the middle of that street uh, because there's no sidewalk, uh, they're not going to be shaded at all. Uh, so there might be, uh, there are some of those, uh, say those factors that are not pavement factors that we would start looking at uh, to see, uh, you know, where is this needed potentially where other important infrastructure is not needed and the proportion of people walking or uh, vehicle owners, or transit users, uh, those are all, uh, you know, things that are in our T2050 mobility study areas, maybe good indicators should this become uh, more like a targeted treatment. Uh, but we'll have to see whether this is, uh, you know, something that we will target to areas or whether this will be citywide going forward. Great. Um, I think you touched on this a little bit, but there's quite a few questions asking um, on, on the roadway striping. Is, is that going to be um, kind of in, in flux as you, as you monitor these or is current color striping being used for right now? Great question. So right now, the current colors are being used. Um, certainly, uh, if you were to look at this, uh, you know, the product website for Cool Seal or other cool pavement products, you might see them use 
uh, dark greens or black striping uh, to be to provide more of a contrast. Um, but for, for the city of Phoenix, that would involve stocking more colors of paint. Uh, so we're, we're really considering how, you know, something like that would in, impact us. Um, so right now we are seeing that our tradition, our standard colors, the yellow and white uh, are working. Uh, you know, if there's a concern or as we watch it and see that, you know, that is uh, something that is an issue, um, we would, you know, we'd have to consider is that uh, a deterrent to using the product or is it a, uh, or would it spur us to come up with other striping solutions like adding a black background or something like that. So as of right now, we're using those colors, uh, our standard uh, striping colors, the yellow and white. Uh, but I think it's something that if it became uh, an issue or a concern, we'd evaluate it and see how that would impact, uh, you know, changing striping, uh, stocking different colors, etc. Okay. And, and kind of tagging on to that, there was also a question on if, if there's any studies done knowing that the, the cars that have lane detection systems, if that is posing any problems, do you know? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Uh, so uh, I know Waymo is not specifically uh, in Phoenix. Uh, but these are local roads, so most of our local streets do not have uh, pavement markings. Um, in the uh, video and images I showed, I think that's it's uh, 44th Street north of Shea. That is uh, a collector street, a minor collector street, but it is striped with center line and bike lanes. Um, I think also in the District 2 location uh, via Tremonto uh, up north of Carefree Highway, that has uh, some lane markings on it. But of that 36 miles, the vast majority are pure local streets. So um, those vehicles that are using lane detection um, aren't going to be using them in a local street anyway. Um, but uh, you know, as that comes around, that's certainly something we might have to consider. Uh, and will that be a contrast issue or uh, some other sort of thing that has to be looked at? But as of right now, it's not yet a factor. Okay, great. Um, have there been any complaints thus far about glare during daylight hours? I've had a few people call in. So we've heard from some of our residents about, about glare. Um, and so it's something, uh, it does have a matte finish, but that doesn't mean there might be some, uh, you know, sun glare, so to speak. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's shiny necessarily. Um, but I know in my uh, I've had that experience on, on our uh, dark colored roads when the sun is hitting our streets at the right uh, at the right angle, you can't see striping. And I've seen that on our freeways and on local streets as well. So I think glare is a, it's a complex visual issue, uh, but it does have a matte finish. And I have heard from a few people or, uh, you know, now I have to wear sunglasses when I'm walking down my neighborhood street. Um, but if we were walking out in the desert in the morning, uh, you know, we wear sunglasses where it's going to be bright. So it certainly is a different look. And so we've heard a little bit, uh, again, on local streets, low speeds and people driving cautiously as they should in their neighborhoods. Uh, I don't think we have seen a safety issue related to any uh, glare. But we've heard a little, we've heard from very few people about it. And that's, but that's also part of why we're surveying uh, the whole community ACE will be canvassing those neighborhoods with postcards and offering a, a little incentive to complete our survey. Sure. Um, is outgassing of the product studied at all? Uh, that's not something we're currently studying. Uh, again, uh, we, uh, we are, uh, it's basically the same as other asphalt seal coats. So I don't believe we have that concern with other seal coat products. Um, so we have not looked at it specifically. Um, and again, we're taking uh, kind of California's lead, at least on, um, you know, what their preferred products are. Uh, and they're certainly uh, very much on top of uh, monitoring and, and checking for other environmental factors that maybe have not been something that our department usually looks at. Um, but uh, specifically, it's not part of this study. Um, what percentage of miles in the city are treated with this cool seal? No. Oh, I'm not going to do math on the spot, but 36 miles <laughs> out of our, uh, you know, 4,800 uh, center line miles. 
Um, so right now, a very small percentage. Um, but again, we're eagerly awaiting the results of the study to then communicate with management and council on how they'd like to proceed. And um, also, you know, uh, I think if it works in Phoenix, you will see other municipalities also. Uh, we have several of my colleagues in other municipalities, even down in Tucson, you know, very interested in what's going to come from it. So they're kind of waiting for us. Um, but uh, in a sense, if it's beneficial, I'm very excited that it might take off into multiple, multiple municipalities and then we'll see how much more we can get down and, and how quickly we can do that. So a small percentage. Uh, is there, is there, okay. <laughs> is, is there a percentage that is essentially like a break even point that would be a, a significant dif uh, difference that City of Phoenix goal would be if this were to continue going? Uh, that's a great question. So I, you know, that's getting to a uh, cost benefit and, uh, you know, if it costs uh, X dollars more per, per square yard compared to a typical uh, asphalt seal coat um, and extends the life of the pavement X number of years, we, we still have to run that analysis. Uh, and again, so we're not going to know, uh, you know, we're not going to have great durability numbers of uh, that we can observe. We have an idea of what uh, the uh, supplier says, how long it will last. And it's one of those trust but verify sort of things. Uh, the other consideration is right now we're getting this product from the plant in California that makes it. Uh, and if we were to continue, particularly Phoenix being uh, a large, uh, potentially a large demand, uh, the supplier has indicated that they might make the product locally, particularly if the state becomes, you know, an area where this product line is uh, desired um, and hopefully the cost would go down. So those are things we'd have to, we're certainly uh, going to look at, but have not yet looked at. Okay, great. A uh, couple of questions on the product itself. Is, is it a rubber or a polymer product? So it's a polymerized uh, asphalt emulsion product. So it's an asphalt emulsion. Uh, so it's got um, Essentially, uh, titanium dioxide is one of the main uh, elements. Of course, uh, the, the pigment or the colorant that makes it uh, light instead of dark. Uh, and that's something actually uh, that can be tweaked. Of course, uh, since it's still using that albedo -O effect primarily, you don't wanna go too dark and lose a reflectivity benefit. Uh, but there has been some discussion of if we can gray it up a little more, it will uh, you know, show less tire marks, grime, and things like that. Um, but it is stain resistant. So some of that really is just sitting on the surface and it depends on how often it, it rains to, to clean it up. So, um, but it's a, so it's an asphalt based, uh, but heavily polymer modified uh, emulsion. Great. Um, do you have an idea of what the curing time for a typical application of this would be? Yeah, so, um, Oh gosh, I'm thinking back. Uh, so I think we were allowing uh, about an hour to 45 minutes, uh, you know, from when you put down the first coat to when it would be ready to put down the second coat. Again, when we're doing full streets at a time, uh, it's going to get a little more time than that just because we've gone down the road, you know, uh, a quarter mile <laughs> before we kind of loop around and come back. But um, I, I would say it's that between coats, it's that hour to 45 minutes. And once you put the final coat, you know, we want uh, a few hours so that the whole uh, surface uh, can set. Um, so overall, probably four hours once you put the second coat. But, uh, you know, we were able to open this up uh, to back to residents during the day. Uh, we did have to come up with some creative solutions to get people in and out of their uh, driveways, uh, no matter how much notice we provide. Um, uh, so, but uh, it's only a few hours of a time frame. So, uh, again, similar to other seal coat products that the city currently uses. Okay, great. Do you have a, a cost comparison between a conventional seal coat compared to this cool pavement uh, coating? Uh, yeah, I can say, um, you know, our, uh, our, our price for this in the pilot, again, understanding that it's coming from California. Uh, it was about $5 a square yard. So for us, that puts it closer to, you know, a slurry seal in terms of the cost our job order contractor might give us, uh, you know, and each agency, I think, is going to know what their cost for 
uh, fog sealing and seal coat is, you know, whether it's a uh, dollar, a dollar ten cents per yard. Um, so, but that's that's that was the contracted price for the pilot project was uh, five dollars per square yard, at uh, 0.25 gallons per square yard. Great. Um, do you know of anybody that's presented any downsides to this product? Um, I mean, I, it's a great question. Uh, not to this product specifically. Uh, but certainly that there is a question generally about uh, this type of product. Again, uh, glare is something people are concerned about. Uh, and if we think of the conservation of energy, energy does not disappear. So it has to go somewhere. So if it's not going into the pavement, heating it up, it's going back up into the atmosphere. So uh, I think there are some studies uh, that have kind of indicated that you might actually feel hotter if it's already hot outside. Um, so that's partially why we say this is to, to uh, combat that nighttime temperature. In the evenings, then this is going to cool down a lot faster and not radiate as much. So, uh, but that is potentially a downside that if you have to walk already in the middle of the day and it's 115 degrees outside and normal asphalt would be 175, uh, the surface temperature might be you know, only 150, uh, but you might not feel any cooler. And at those temperatures, you know, the difference of feeling a degree cooler or hotter might not be noticeable. Uh, so there are certainly criticisms sort of in that regard to this type. Uh, also that uh, our infrastructure is not exactly designed for uh, the radiance coming off. So we're really good at cooling our roofs, uh, but are all of our windows cool to, to the extent that if our street is now uh, dispersing solar energy during the day, uh, will it be hotter there? And those are things we don't know, but that's why we're working with ASU. And those are some of the criticism, criticisms that I have heard. Uh, but again, we're hoping that, you know, we definitely see the difference in surface temperature. We're hoping we'll see that nighttime effect. And then that compounds to a very, uh, you know, a fraction of degree cooling uh, results in millions and millions of dollars of uh, energy savings. And again, the potential uh, comfort and life health safety benefits um, you know, may mean that we have to work through some of those other design challenges. Okay, great. Uh, we have kind of a two-part question here. Um, how does this seal coat compare to a com concrete pavement in reducing the heat island effect? And is there any work being done to track the difference in the oxidation rate between the cool seal and the traditional uh, method? Uh, good question. Um, so I think we, I think there will be, uh, I don't know the answer totally. I think literature might point to concrete being uh, less of a solar mass than asphalt, uh, but it is still a, a constructed surface. Uh, there are also several other costs with concrete, uh, particularly in an urban setting where we have utilities all under our streets. Uh, so doing any work on a concrete street is going to result in uh, a much more major disruption, more costly repairs, uh, re-doweling, re rejointing. So there's even, there's so much that goes into deciding it is concrete or asphalt better or, or how it would relate to this. But I think generally, I, I, would, I would think I've seen concrete might be uh, a little cooler than asphalt. Um, but with those other costs, you know, uh, what are other options we can do and we already have the existing asphalt infrastructure to consider. Uh, in terms of oxidation, again, we're not specifically studying uh, oxidation of the product versus you know, an, another seal coat, uh, but that is sort of what we're getting at by measuring the temperature in the pavement that is covered with the uh, coating versus pavement that is not. Um, and to see how that aging, uh, you know, preventing aging, pre preventing oxidation might happen. Uh, but in that sense, it's not an anti-oxidation uh, uh, product unless you consider it is providing a physical barrier uh, between the asphalt surface and the air, at least for the extent that it's uh, present before it wears off. Okay. Um, you mentioned LA. Are there any other cities that you know of that are on kind of this leading edge use of these pavements? Uh, I know there are a few other uh, pilot areas out there. I think uh, Knoxville or Louisville. Uh, uh, LA certainly is very much on the bleeding edge and they've been trying things for a few years. 
Uh, but I know uh, Australia also is using a lot of these types of products and uh, you know, that's a whole uh, country slash continent that's you know, considering this. Um, but LA is sort of our model right now where we have uh, good contacts with them. It's close enough that we can drive to when it's appropriate to go and visit places. And uh, they've been great partners in helping us learn. Again, it's been nice to let them do some of the legwork and then you know, we still wanna be innovative and lead, uh, but hopefully not bleed too much. <laughs> Understood. Um, is, is this being considered in any new construction to get kind of a jump start on the, the benefits of this? Uh, that's an excellent question. So it's not really being considered right now. I can tell you um, we do have uh, APS is redeveloping their Grant Park substation, which is at uh, uh, Fourth, uh, Fourth Avenue in Grant downtown. And they are putting in uh, some streets that will actually be private. So they'll be privately maintained. And they've approached us to uh, apply that product or a similar product. Um, and since it's going to be privately maintained, uh, we're generally supportive of it. So I think if this pilot program continues out of a pilot, I think you know, we'll be having a discussion of what will be an approved product, what will be the development standards, um, and uh, considering how the city then, if it's going to be infrastructure the city maintains uh, versus private streets, uh, that might play into it as well. But as, as of yet, we're kind of waiting to see even if the pilot will uh, continue before we tackle that. Great. Do you know our uh, manhole covers and valve covers uh, preserved during all the placement of this material? Uh, yes, we uh, preserve or we cover in place uh, manholes, survey monuments, utility covers as much as we can. Uh, I think my picture is still up. You can still see uh, down the center of this street, uh, you can see the manholes. Uh, you can see actually still the concrete ring around the manholes. Uh, and so you will still see them. Uh, it's interesting, you know, our, the contractor decided to use essentially uh, pieces of carpet <laughs> to, to cover these. Uh, in some of our other, you know, fog seals or seal coats, we might just use a plastic sheeting, uh, but they thought this was viscous enough and was getting dragged enough that they essentially put uh, these round uh, circles of, uh, you know, carpet over uh, utilities and manholes. So they were protected in place. I agree. Um, do we have an expected life of the treatment on residential streets currently? Yeah, so, uh, you know, we're told it's going to be essentially, uh, you know, a seven year product. So that's something that will take us a long time to verify, but uh, that's kind of what we're expecting. And again, uh, uh, that's what we're, that's what we're expecting. And then compared to uh, tradition or traditional asphalt seal coats that we currently use, uh, you know, we kind of plan them to be a three to five year life. So, um, you know, could be uh, a little more or could be a, almost double. Uh, that's something that's yet to be seen, but we're expecting that five to seven year time frame right now. Great. Uh, last question that we have, do you know if this product is currently being used on airport runways or taxi areas at all? Good question. I don't think it's being used on runways or taxiways, um, but I do know that uh, the airport has also put down a little of this product uh, in other places in the airport. Again, I think there are lots of paved surfaces uh, that could benefit or surfaces that only see vehicular traffic. Um, I don't know that it would be wise to or prudent to put this uh, under a plane, but maybe a taxiway where it's a slow moving vehicle uh, like an airplane. Um, and I know, I know we put a little bit down for Sky Harbor uh, as well, um, but I don't think it's for runways or taxiways uh, yet. All right. Well, that is all the questions that we have. I appreciate you um, taking your time to present to our membership here. And if um, any other questions come in, I can forward those over to Ryan. But thank you so much for your presentation today. And thanks everyone for attending. Look forward to seeing you at our next presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone.